All right, welcome everyone. Hello and welcome to Adobe Students Live. My name is Terry White. We're going to be talking about a quick, easy way to do one of those dreamy, you've seen them before, Photoshop double exposures. And if you, if you like, what's he talking about? What's a double exposure effect? Um, it's easier to show it to you than it is to describe it, so I'd rather just go ahead and build it. But real quick, it's one of those where you may have seen like a person and then half of their head is like a forest or stars or something like that. That's, a, that's one of those double exposure effects. Now, there are a ton of ways to do it. So I'm by no means saying that this is the only way. <laughs> There's a ton of ways to do it. And uh, some people really take their time and, and do it extremely carefully and extremely well and meticulously. And this is not going to be one of those. <laughs> this is going to be really quick how to do one in like three steps. And then if you want to go on from there and tweak it and, and make it meticulous after these three steps, then by all means, go ahead and do it. So first thing you're going to need is Photoshop. Let's pop over to Photoshop and, and get started. You're going to need at least two images. You're going to need the background image. You're going to need whatever's going to be the foreground, the person or the building or the animal or the pet or whatever it's going to be. It doesn't have to be a person. All right, so I'm going to use my uh, Creative Cloud library where I've got my images that I want to uh, use for this. Now I've got a couple different Adobe Stock Forest images. These can be pictures of anything. They don't have to be a forest. Um, but I've seen birds, I've seen forest, I've seen mountains, I've seen oceans, I've seen all kinds of things used for this. And I think the forest works pretty well. Now I've got two versions of the forest. I've got this one, uh, which this is all, all also kind of dreamy in and of itself. And you've got the nice bird flying over and that's kind of cool. And again, I got this from Adobe Stock. So if you just type in forest, I think this is like one of the, the second, third or fourth images that come up. Um, the only thing I don't like about this is the big sun ray coming down with the bird. I love the bird, but the sun ray is going to actually make me have to do more work. <laughs> so I'm not going to use this one for now. I'm going to use the second one. Uh, which does have the sun rays coming through, but it's, it's a lot smaller and uh, I like the reflections in the water and the leaves on the water and this is just going to make a better background. Again, either one would work. It just depends. I'm trying to keep this simple for those of you who are new to doing this uh, just to show you how easy this can be done. All right, next thing you're going to need is a subject to go on top. And like I said, that could be a person, place or thing. <laughs> it doesn't have to, or even an animal. It doesn't have to be a person, but it um, people usually like seeing this effect on people. I don't know why. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and drag that one over. Now, if I double click it, it's going to open it, but I want to drag it over and create a new layer. Now, the layer is not quite the same size, so I'm just going to go ahead and hold down my shift key while it's in free transform and scale it up just a little bit more. And also, this is just a personal preference. She's facing to the right. In this case, I want her facing to the left. So I'm just going to right click on this and just flip horizontal while I've got it in this free transform mode. Um, now, I could move it over some more so the hair is almost to the edge and then expand the white um, foreground to maybe put copy or something else if I was gonna use this in an ad, but you know those things can be done. All right, so now that I've got that in place, I'm just gonna go ahead and lock it down. And I'm going to also create a duplicate of that layer. You'll see why in a moment, but I'm gonna create a duplicate. All right, when I create the duplicate, I'm just going to drag that down to um, the uh, new layer icon. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. We're not going to work with the duplicate yet. So now I've got just these two things. I've got, or three things actually. I've got the, um, oops, whoa, what did I just do? Sorry about that, folks. All right, the screen flipped out for a second. I hit the wrong button. All right, anyway, I've got these, um, these two layers. I've got the background and the profile, and of course the profile duplicate. Um, but anyway, we're not going to wor worry about the duplicate just yet. Okay, so step one, open your background. Step two, drag your, your subject onto it. Step three, I said it was going to be three steps. It's going to be this easy. Picking a blending mode. A blending mode it will depend on the subject and it will depend on the background. Now, you notice that the background's white. I mean, in, in the subject, the background's white. She's very light and her hair is dark. So the first blending mode that came to mind, the first one I tried on this image, it worked perfectly, was lighten. Because I want to use the, the underlying forest image to lighten anything 
that is already or that is darker than than the background so uh, just switch to light mode we start to get that effect and that could be it that could be your three steps right there now there's obviously more we can do and we will do more but i said you could do it in three steps three steps boom you're done let's say we want to do more let's say i don't like it on her eyes which i don't i want her eyes to show through um, so that's where i would come in and do step four or five and six you know the other steps to kind of clean it up a little bit also i might want to reposition the the glow the, the, the sun rays that are coming in maybe i want to move it over move it down move it up maybe i want to um kind of fade in more of her hair you know because it's just really replaced the hair so those are all kinds of things that can be done after the fact but we kind of got the initial effect in so again step one background step two subject Step three, change it to a blending mode that works. Lighten won't work on every subject, especially if the subject's darker, or, or I'm sorry, yeah, darker than the background. So in that case, you might wanna use darken. You might wanna use, um, another one that was kinda of cool was uh, Vivid Light. That created some cool effects. So just really, you're gonna to have to experiment because it's gonna vary image by image. That soft light, which does virtually nothing. Uh, what was another one I was playing with? There was also, well, I'll just show you the opposite, which is darken, does the opposite. So it shows more on her face and not on her hair. So it's the opposite of lighten. So you'll have to experiment with your subject on your background to see which blending mode is going to give you that initial effect the way you want it. Okay, so now that we got that in there, I am going to go ahead and turn on that duplicate layer, of course, which is on top, and it's covering up the entire layer. I want to now put a mask on that entire layer at the top to hide the whole thing. To do that, I'm going to hold down my Option key on my keyboard, or Alt key if you're on Windows, and then click the Layer Mask way down at the bottom in the Layers panel, Add Layer Mask, with the Option key down. That will hide that entire layer. So you're saying, well, now it's like the layer's not on. And you're right. It's like the layer's not on right now, but that Layer Mask is in fact there hiding the entire layer. So now I can switch to my brush tool. And since the layer is hidden in black, I can use a, um, a white brush to remove the effect on the areas of the photo I don't want it on. So like I said, I didn't like it on her eyes, so I can just take it off the eyes. Or maybe I'd zoom in and only apply it to the pupil of the eye. So if I zoom in and uh, take it off the eye completely and then uh, hit the letter X to switch to, switch to black and scroll or, or zoom my uh, brush size down, then I could maybe paint it back in just in the area that I want it. I don't like that, but you could do things like that where the pupil or the um, iris of the eye are part of the effect. So you'll see lots of, and this is what, the, what I'm talking about, that manic, manipulate. <laughs> meticulous part that you would go in and do after the fact to kind of tweak it the way you want and also while I'm zoomed in uh, I'll go ahead and switch it back to white and again just get it off the eye completely I didn't like it on the eye at all the rest of it is okay maybe also not up the nose probably not a good idea but the rest of the skin is okay I'm okay with it being on the other parts now Keep in mind that that background, which is the forest, is still there. So we can still do more things with it. You can go in, for example, and just click the lock so that it turns it into a layer. And now, if I didn't like the position of the sun, uh, I can either just, here, Command-T, the free transform that layer. I can make that layer bigger, which will, of course, move parts of the forest around in her hair. And maybe I want the sun to be more up there and creating a few more leaves up, uh, up that way, <laughs> or over that way, I should say. All right, so then I hit enter, and I've got that in place. Now, I talked about, well, what if I wanted to see more of her hair or more of the background or just make it a little bit more dreamy? There's a couple of things you can do. First and foremost, you got to remember that this middle layer is the layer really controlling how much of this we see and how much we don't see. So if I lower the opacity of that, we can start to see more of the background shine through. So it just really, and you can mask that as well. You can depend, determine how much of that and where you want to see it 
just by controlling the opacity. We could also apply a mask to that layer. And when I apply a mask to that layer, I can switch to a brush. I can switch to black paint and I can, or color. I can make that brush nice and big. And I can make that brush a much lower opacity. Instead of uh, painting at 100%, let's drop it down to maybe 25%. And so that now when I start to paint on that, it's gonna take a minute for that to come through. I can have parts of it coming through in areas where I wanna see it and parts of it coming through in areas that I don't. All right, I'm gonna undo that. Last but not least, keep in mind, you also have the same ability to do that with the mask on the top layer as well. So if I switch that to white, I can um, basically tone down some of it coming through so we can see more hair. I actually wouldn't wanna do that on the sun, maybe on the forest part where uh, the more I paint over that, the more of her natural hair will show through. So again, you can play around with these different effects, play around with your image. Also, changing the tone of your image will also affect how much shows through. So for example, oh, I got, actually I got two examples. For example, we can go to levels. And if I just change the, uh, the mid-tones to be darker or lighter, that will also control how much of that effect starts to show through. So you can really have some fun that way as well. And last but not least, what if I, I want my forest in, to not be color? What if I want it to be black and white? Well, if I go to the forest layer and I click the black and white uh, adjustment for adjustment layers, that will give me a black and white forest now. So I can still control how that black and white looks because when you go to the black and white adjustment, you still have all the original colors that are in the image. It knows there's a bunch of green in there, for example. So if I were to drag the green slider, I am controlling how much of that turns gray or black, depending on how I drag that slider over. Maybe I don't remember what color was what. That's why you have the, um, you have the, what is it called? Oh, I cannot remember, never remember the name of this, but this tool here, the little finger that goes back and forth, uh, the direct adjustment tool thingy, that thing there. You click on that, uh, it gives you an eyedropper, but what you're really going to do is you're going to paint, you're going to point at an area that you want to adjust, and then you're just going to drag left or right, and it remembers what color that was. So I'm down on the leaves, which are kind of red. I didn't pick the red slider. It's moving the red slider because it knows what color I'm on. If I go up here in, in the trees, it starts to move the yellows because it knows what color I'm on. If I go up here in the sun, well, it's not going to do much. But if I go over here, then it knows that those are the greens. So you can make adjustments in your image, in your black and white, just with the targeted adjustment tool. I remember what it was. The targeted adjustment tool um, will let you do those kind of, ooh, I kind of like that. That's kind of cool right there. I like that a lot because it looks like ice forming under her chin. So. Play, have fun creating your dreamy multiple exposure, double exposure, triple exposure image. And again, there's nothing stopping me from now dropping, you know, dropping out the white background and putting something, putting her in something totally different. Or merging all of these layers together to create a new composite. So I always do the wrong key. There we go. Command, Option, Shift, or PC, Control, Alt, Shift, E will take everything you just did and put it on a layer all by itself. So now that layer is one that I can manipulate by st and still keep the original layers for going back and making more adjustments. Lots of fun. Have fun. Go do your double exposure effect. Play around with the blending modes. Get the right two images or the right blending modes on the two images you're using. And you'll be able to do this again in just three steps or more, depending on how much you want to fine tune it. All right. I see an awesome. Thanks, Terrence. Um, I don't really see any questions. People just kind of soaked it in and that was it. You can't see anything. Why can't you see anything? I can see something. All right. And hello, Tom. All right. So with that said, um, thanks for watching. We will catch you on the next one. Tomorrow I will be on the Creative Cloud channel. So facebook.com slash um, 
Adobe Creative Cloud. And I'll be on that channel talking about a new feature and a new service in Creative, well, not a new service, but a new feature in an existing service in Creative Cloud. Uh, so stay tuned for that one, same time, same place. All right, uh, can you go over it all? Oh, I just got here. Dan, you know what? As soon as I click the button, you'll be able to rewatch it again. And I won't have to go over it all because it'll be a replay. All right, thanks for joining me, Dan. Anyway, Cheers, everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Okay, Dan, you can start watching right now.